In the opening shots, we see a woman named Beth returning home. She spends time alone and drinking while watching family videos that feature her husband Owen. They had been married for 14 years. Beth was unaccustomed to sleeping alone on the bed. At one point she thought she heard strange noises, so she had to go down to check. The next morning Beth woke up on the floor, as she couldn't stay in her bedroom. Even outside the house a feeling of unease wouldn't let her go, she saw footprints on the stairs near the dock, and then the sound of a gunshot rang out. Despite her condition, Beth came to work. She is a school teacher. Her friend and colleague Claire wonders if she is holding up. Beth is looking for a new home. The mother of one of her students came to see her about her son's bad grade. He was supposed to bring the teacher his corrected assignment on the last day of school, but she wasn't there. Barely holding back her nerves, Beth reported that she was absent because her husband had voluntarily passed away that day. He took a boat, a gun, and sailed to the middle of the lake, where it all happened. Beth corrected the grade. Near the dock, she caught up with her neighbor, Mel. She informed him that she wanted to sell the house, and asked if the neighbor had heard a gunshot this morning. The answer was no. Beth watches family videos again, and when she decided to get rid of Owen's things, she found blueprints of their house, which her husband had built with his own hands. But in her research, Beth came across other, very strange drawings signed as follows, our house and reverse side, non-standard options. At night the music turned on by itself and a message came from Owen, come downstairs. Beth immediately began to call him, but there were some strange noises on the phone and through the window she saw her husband standing on the surface of the lake. In the morning Beth woke up again on the floor. The first thing she did was check her phone to make sure there were no messages from Owen. Then she decided to check her husband's cell phone. The police had returned it along with the rest of the things he had on him. In the gallery, Beth stumbled upon a strange photograph of a girl who looked like her, apparently being photographed in a sneaky way. Claire later assured her that it was Beth herself in the photo but she could not remember wearing such a blouse. In the evening, Beth went to a bar with her co-workers to unwind. She drank a lot and began to claim that something strange was going on in her house and told about her realistic nightmares. She also pulled out a note that Owen had left, which she now always carried with her. It said, you're right, there's nothing there, nothing to be afraid of. The threat had passed. Claire walked drunk Beth home. She admitted to her friend that she understood the note. At 17, Beth had suffered a four-minute cardiac arrest in an accident, and there really was nothing on the other side of life, no light, no tunnel. During the night, Beth woke up to the sound of the doorbell. Outside, she saw a crowd of girls running out of nowhere, who disappeared somewhere behind the fence. Beth senses her husband's presence and notices the footsteps leading to the dock. Then she is picked up by unknowing forces and Beth finds herself in a boat that begins to float on its own and soon docks at the shore. Beth saw a house completely identical to her own, and in the window Beth spotted herself and her husband. The number on the house was a mirror image. Using the keys, an uncomprehending and frightened Beth got inside. She woke up on the couch and decided to go through all the pictures on her husband's computer. Among the files she saw numerous pictures of different girls, and each one looked a lot like her. In the woods not far from the house, Beth met Mel. She was trying to find the very house she saw on the edge of nightmare and reality. Mel thinks Beth is out of her mind and that she better not wander into the woods alone in her condition. Soon, in an inconspicuous place, Beth actually stumbled upon a structure of some kind. Inside, Beth found a creepy object resembling a statue, and in a panic she went to her neighbor's house. She tried to ask him what Owen wanted to build here, but Mel didn't know any such thing. He confessed, however, that he had once seen Owen wandering in the woods with some woman who looked a lot like Beth. He later came to his house intoxicated and covered in mud. Owen said he was haunted by strange urges and shameful desires, but he supposedly found a way to control them. Since there had been no relapses, Mel decided not to pay any attention to what had happened. In the evening Beth was shaking things around the house for anything suspicious, and she found a book on the occult in which the lines about the voodoo doll were underlined in red. However, Beth was again distracted by strange sounds and a sense of an extraneous presence, and a silhouette appeared to her. She didn't know what to think. The next day Beth paid a visit to the very store where the book had been purchased. She couldn't get anything specific, but she recognized the bookshelves in front of which one of the pictures in Owen's collection had been taken. She also recognized the girl in the picture who happened to work here. Her name is Madeline. She confessed that Owen had flirted with her and that they had gone to a bar together a couple of times. The girl turned out to be remarkably similar to Beth. 
she claimed that there was no intimate relationship between her and Owen. Beth was confused, so she decided to consult with Claire. Friend thinks she better stop rummaging through her husband's things, because it wasn't likely to bode well. Claire also advised Beth to take her mind off things and to rest. At home, Beth, sensing her husband's presence, begins to call out to him and asks him to give her some kind of sign. But then Madeline showed up, and Beth invited her in. Madeline told her that Owen had once brought her to this house, and later to some unfinished structure of which he was very proud. There he showed her a strange statue, and they soon kissed. But at some point Owen began to subject her to asphyxiation, but he let her go almost immediately. It didn't look like a crime, but more like a game. That night Owen said he was confused and couldn't live like that anymore. He was afraid he couldn't control it anymore. He didn't elaborate on what exactly he was talking about. At night, Beth took a flashlight and returned to that house right in the rain. Under the boards, she made a terrible discovery there were many bodies belonging to the girls. In fear, Beth ran away from there, and already at home left Claire a voice message. She refused to believe her own eyes. And while she was taking a shower, the music turned on by itself again. Beth went to check what was wrong, and on the misted glass appeared the inscription, here. Beth was no longer in control of her own body, she was controlled by some unknown force. And when Beth tried to escape, the door to the room slammed shut. In the mirror reflection, she saw the hut and the moment from the past when Owen had brutally disposed of the girl. And then some evil entity rendered Beth herself unconscious. When she came to, she ran into the bedroom. One of the girls had managed to hide under the bed, and Owen had already dragged the other's body here. Beth continued to be haunted by horrible episodes from the past, and then an evil entity in the form of her husband told her that she had whispered to Owen to get rid of his wife. He did not want to harm her, however, and in return he sacrificed other women who looked like her to the entity. An unknown force began to torment Beth again. The next morning, worried Claire dropped in at her house, but Beth was nowhere to be found. She was stuck on the edge of nightmare and reality in that boat with an entity in Owen's image. The ghost was holding a gun. The entity was telling Beth that her husband wanted to keep her safe and therefore was forced to leave his life voluntarily. Meanwhile, Claire saw her friend alone in the boat from the window, and Beth had already pointed her gun at herself, but then put it down, coming back to reality. Claire reached her and pulled her out of the boat. On the dock they started hugging, Mel who had witnessed the whole thing was also very scared and concerned. In the final shots, we see Beth staring at the boat bobbing on the waves.